Hey everybody, so today we're going to be taking a look at BMW's car access system or CIS or CAS, whatever you want to call it. So taking a look at the big picture here, uh, CAS is essentially BMW's anti-theft system that they integrated into their pretty much every single model um, beginning roughly in 2005 and as far as I'm aware is still currently used. So the important thing to note here though is that we have two versions of CAS that were utilized and implemented into BMW's various models. So we have the first version of CAS which is essentially the same thing as EWS3. Now if you're confused on what EWS3 is, um, I made a video about it and I will go ahead and link that in the description below if you want to check it out. So we know that uh, the early version of CAS and EWS3 function entirely identically to each other. The control module and the DME of the car uh, all have a table of codes that they access and essentially transmit to each other whenever uh, the car is turned on just in order to verify that the codes are identical to each other. So if the value of the codes is the same between the control module and the DME, then congratulations, you get to start your car. Um, if not, unfortunately, your car just won't turn over. Somehow in their infinite wisdom, BMW managed to make the exact same thing uh, when they're designing the early CAS system, yet somehow also make it so much less reliable. Just what we love to hear. So anyways, at this point, we've learned that early CAS modules function almost identically to EWS3 and uh, that they have the rolling table of values that gets checked every time you turn the car on. So now let's take a look at the later generation that was implemented uh, in what I can only assume are the facelifted models of each of the generations that you'll see on screen. So these CAS modules uh, function very similarly in that it just checks between the CAS module and the DME, uh, you know, a code. Make sure that they're the same and then it lets you start the car when you turn the key. Now, the biggest difference though is that while the early generation CAS module holds 16-bit uh, codes inside that table that it cycles through, um, the later generation just stores a single code called the secret key, which is a 128-bit serial code that just gets checked every time you start the car. So as a quick visualization, your key being inserted into the ignition barrel brings power to this ring antenna, which then communicates with the CAS module itself. And that communicates back and forth with the DME, um, exchanges codes with each other to make sure that they are equal to each other. And should the codes be identical, the DME then sends a signal to the starter and allows you to crank over the car. So now that we have some background information as to how the system behaves, let's, let's take a look to see what happens if and when the CAS module fails. Well, simply put, your car won't start. These systems, unfortunately, are very all or nothing just because of the fact that, you know, they're almost entirely electrically based. It either sends the code or it doesn't. However, that being said, most of the time, these failures are due to an actual hardware issue with the control module itself. Uh, more likely than not, it's the CAS module versus, you know, potentially an issue with your DME or your ring antenna. Now, the real unfortunate part with this, though, is that if your CAS module does fail, unfortunately, there's not really a whole lot you can do to fix it. You just kind of have to get a new one and then have it synchronized in order to match the code with your DME. That being said, if you have a model with an early CAS module, there is a chance that if you're experiencing a no start condition, it's not necessarily an issue with your CAS module itself, and rather the module and the DME have kind of fallen out of sync with each other. Unfortunately, this is something that can happen, and it's also the reason why BMW scrapped that whole rolling table idea in the first place. So in order to bring these tables back in sync with each other, what you have to do is you have to unfortunately buy a tool that is going to let you scan it and then actually uh, completely reset these tables back to their original starting location. The biggest problem with this is that if you don't already have one of these high-end OBD2 scanners, the price of one of these scanners is pretty much right on par with buying a new CAS module and shipping it out to have it reprogrammed to match your DME. Either way though, um, I hope that this was able to kind of help you understand a little bit about the uh, technical side, um, seeing how these systems interact with each other every time you get to start your car. Uh, it was just a quick little rundown video. Either way, I hope that this video is kind of able to help you, you know, understand a little bit of the process that goes into uh, the BMW's anti-theft system and understand some of the technical aspects a little bit better. Anyways, though, um, if you guys like what you saw or found any of the information at least a little bit helpful, um, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like on the video and consider subscribing as well if you want to see more. 
Also, be sure to comment any suggestions for anything you guys would want to see me discuss technical aspects of or, you know, kind of dig a little bit into and make a video on uh, just kind of explaining how it works.